Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, it's my pleasure to bring you a detailed, in-depth look at the very unique and wickedly cool 2014 Mercedes-Benz E63 AMG S wagon. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the E63. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Mercedes-Benz of South Charlotte, located in Pineville, North Carolina, for allowing me to come down and film the very unique 2014 Mercedes-Benz E63 AMG S wagon. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. Now, across the line, the E-Class features a remote spark key access system as standard, so you can wirelessly lock and unlock the vehicle via the touch sensors located on all four door handles. In order to lock, all you have to do is just tap the little depressed portion, then after waiting a second, just grab the handle, there's a touch sensor behind it, and it automatically unlocks the vehicle. Now this exterior color is known as Diamond White, featuring the full premium black Napa leather interior with silver color accent stitching and matching seat belts, nicely paired with black ashwood trim. Now along with that smart key system, the E-Class also features remote and push button ignition via the silver accent button in the dash. All you have to do to start is just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to go. Beautiful sound from that twin turbo V8. Now the new E63 features electromechanical speed sensitive rack and pinion power steering and this very unique AMG specific 3 spoke leather and Alcantara wrap steering wheel. You do have white color accent stitching trailing around the wheel, your hand stitched Napa leather down below as well as up top and your Alcantara coming across the sides. You do have some heavy grip bolsters up top here and more modest ones down below with your aluminum accenting your spoke and split spoke down below here. Not to mention a flat bottom as well as top race inspired feel. Multifunction controls located on either side of the airbag cover. As far as the gearbox, the sole transmission available is AMG's 7 speed speed shift automated manual gearbox fed through this unique controller mounted in the center console. To activate drive, just put your foot on the brake and tip it all the way back. Half a click up for neutral, and then put your foot on the brake and tip it all the way up for reverse. Now what's really cool about this particular vehicle and available on a lot of the newest Mercedes products is the stereoscopic 360 degree camera system. So you can essentially see all angles of the vehicle including top down views for superior ease in parking. Basically, utilizing the little command controller in the center console, you're able to activate full screen for 360 degree views and if you click all the way towards the top, you can go through the different modes. Back, side profile, front, Very cool. You can also adjust your brightness off to the far right. You also have guidance lines that automatically adjust as you turn the wheel. And activate park via the P in front. Beautifully accented in a satin silver gear housing with leather on top and the embossed AMG crest, amongst a black piano veneer and aluminum center console. 
To the left hand side of the gear housing is your transmission shift controller located all the way up here with an aluminum rotary knob consisting of controlled efficiency, sport mode, sport plus, and manual shifting mode. Controlled efficiency gears the car for better fuel economy, so it's going to shift a little bit quicker to keep the RPMs down and basically be the most subdued driving mode. Switch on over to sport mode and it decreases shifting times by about 30% and gives it a little bit more of a peppier feel. Switch it to sport plus, is, that's where it starts to get interesting. You have lightning fast 100 millisecond shifts and then manual mode allows you full manual shifting capability via the aluminum paddle shifters mounted on the back of the steering wheel. Not to mention rev matching downshifts through that AMG specifically tuned exhaust. Your traction control here, adaptive dampers, as well as an AMG driving mode here that automatically puts the vehicle in sport mode and alters a few of the other characteristics to give the maximum performance. And so, we'll go ahead and flip on the automatic LED headlamps, the rear fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Of course, all four windows are fully automatic. And we're going to check out the exterior, shall we? You'll also notice that the interior will chime a few times, letting you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. It hasn't been long since the all-new W212 generation Mercedes E-Class first hit the market for the 2010 model year. By keeping steadfast with mid-cycle model updates, the 2014 E-Class lineup receives a thorough styling makeover to soften the lines and give it a more athletic profile. This also goes the same for the wagon which also receives the same updates this year. Not to mention, AMG cars also get a substantial power bump that's now routed through all four wheels via Mercedes 4MATIC all-wheel drive system. For the first time, 4MATIC is the standard drivetrain for the E63 and the new E63S, allowing for superior all-weather traction and increased grip while still allowing characteristic rear-wheel drive behavior with its heavier rear bias. As far as quick E-Class recap, the W212 was a big departure for the E-Class when it was first introduced, in both styling and behavior. The car was all new from the sheet metal down to the steel unibody chassis that gave it an increase in torsional rigidity by 30%. It carried on the quad headlamps up front, but now are more squared off than the previous oval lamps. From the front to the rear flanks, the body also saw more creases and sharp edges than ever before. This gave the E-Class a new identity. It was more assertive, modern, and sleek rather than traditional and stately. It also began incorporating more aluminum. The hood, fenders, doors, radiator support, and steering column are aluminum, while the trunk is composite and hides various antennas. This helps save a little weight, especially with the addition of the all-wheel drive system. Even though it's primarily a steel-intensive vehicle, 72% of panels are high-strength tensile steel, stronger and lighter than standard materials. The wagon, of course, has increased dimensions when compared to the sedan. Increases in length by 1.3 inches, width by 2.7 inches, and height by 3.2 inches. Of course, curb weight is also up by about 300 pounds. A more upright greenhouse also gives marginal improvements in interior space. 2014 takes everything a little further by softening the exterior a bit while keeping the muscular stance. Headlamps are slimmer, one-piece units that feature visual separation with LED accenting inside the optional LED headlamps. The fascias look more elegant and refined, while the rear was also smoothed over a bit. AMG cars, of course, wear more aggressive accessories. Up front, a redesigned fascia, which Mercedes refers to as an A-wing design, features color-keyed accents with a slender piece of chrome brightwork. The grille is more pronounced with dual center crossbars that can be also had with an illuminating star, blended into full adaptive LED headlamps and flared out fenders. The chrome accent pieces trail the more pronounced sills as well as the rear fascia that features a blacked out diffuser and quad polished AMG exhaust tips. For an additional cost, there's also a carbon fiber exterior kit that replaces the fascia chrome, side sill accents and mirror caps with genuine carbon fiber, while a night styling pack blacks everything out. The revised AMG E-Class came out for 2012 and debuted a smaller displacement twin turbocharged V8 over the naturally aspirated 6.2 liter. Overall, it's a more efficient power plant and packs a greater punch. 2014 E63s in general see a big power bump, but with the new S model, it gets an even higher dose of muscle. Formerly known as the optional performance package, the E63S is its own model now with a familiar set of upgrades over the standard E63, including a limited slip differential. Along with 4MATIC, the E63 also features torque vectoring to enhance cornering traction with the wheels that have the most grip. 
In its standard setting, the all-wheel drive system splits torque 33-67% to between the front and rear and can distribute up to 70% at either end and only adds 154 pounds. The E63S features an optional set of staggered 19-inch satin black 10-spoke aluminum alloy wheels wrapped in Pirelli P0 high-performance summer tires measuring 255-35 in front and 285-30 in the rear. Brakes consist of large cross-drill ventilated discs, two-piece in front, one-piece out back, that measures 14.2 by 1.4 inches in front with six-piston fixed red calipers on S models and 14.2 by 1-inch discs in the rear with four-piston fixed calipers. This setup brings the E63S to a stop in a very short 107 feet. The wider track and sticky tires also help aid an impressive handling profile, able to pull upwards of .97G in lateral cornering forces on the skid pad. The suspension is fully independent, tuned by AMG with McPherson struts in front, coil springs, and a multi-link rear with pneumatic springs, adaptive dampers, and stability bars. The pneumatic springs out back automatically raise and lower the vehicle depending on how much load back there as well as the angle that the vehicle sits at. The three-mode dial in the center console I touched on earlier also affects the steering as well as throttle mapping in addition to the shift characteristics and variable damping. Overall length is 193.4 inches with a width of 76.4 inches and a height of 60 inches. Total curb weight depending on how equipped is around 4,700 pounds. And taking into consideration its performance nature, a lot of the publications that you read will actually prefer the handling characteristics of the wagon counterpart versus the sedan, with a better balance of weight having more weight over the rear wheels. So we'll go ahead and pop the hood. The E63 comes with a fantastic combination of power and refinement in the form of an all-aluminum, hand-built, twin-turbo, direct-injected 5.5 liter V8 that now comes standard with a fuel-saving auto start-stop feature. Standard E63 sedans have a power increase to 550 horsepower and 531 pound-feet of torque over last year's 518 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. The wagon, being such a niche vehicle, comes only as the highest performance S offering. S models turn up the heat even further with an increase in turbo boost from 13 to 14.5 PSI. The resulting horsepower is a staggering 577 at 5500 RPM and 590 pound-feet of torque between 1750 and 5000 RPM. This translates to 0 to 60 times of 3.4 seconds and quarter mile times of 11.7 seconds at 122 miles an hour. Top speed is a factory claimed 186 miles an hour. The efficient power plant also escapes the gas guzzler tax. With a 21.1 gallon tank and required premium fuel, expect a range between 16 miles to a gallon on the city and 23 on the highway. The E-Class boasts a well-appointed interior with excellent build quality as you would expect. All of the panels feature soft touch material or hand-stitched leather with accent stitching. Available in five color schemes including two-tone or three schemes for AMG cars. You could choose between three different wood veneers like the black ash wood we have here or carbon fiber for AMG models. No details have been spared in using high quality materials as well as polished aluminum trim rather than chrome. The vibe is very modern and refined. And of course, all of your power accessories are located on the door including your windows, locks, and mirrors, not to mention all of your seat adjustments with power headrest adjustment and three-person memory. Lower storage down below with trunk release. In the AMG models, you have unique sport leather bucket seats with a good amount of lateral grip. They're nice and supportive with great attention to detail. The silver accent stitching also complements the silver seat belts for a cool visual effect. The middle portion of the seats are also ventilated for the heating and cooling function. Also for AMG cars, you'll have the specific ribbed accenting coming across the bottom and upper cushions. The AMG tag is also stamped into the back of the seat, and you'll see the nice tufted accents of the leather, hinting at the increased detail. On the inner portion of the driver's seat, you'll also find a myriad of power adjustments including side bolstering adjustment, lumbar, thigh support, as well as active massage. There's also a little storage compartment located right in front. As we continue on through the vehicle, you notice it also has unique AMG aluminum illuminated door sill plaques, aluminum sport pedals, as well as a standard driver knee airbag. The steering wheel is power tilt telescoping and also features heat. Also taking a closer look at the dash, you'll notice that it is also wrapped in hand-stitched leather as you continue on through the length of the vehicle, beautifully accented with the very modern wood tones as well as the satin chrome trim, and finished off with a full black Alcantara headliner and panoramic roof. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds.
I'm going to shut her up. Of course, beautifully tight solid panels. Now, as you'd expect, the E63 pretty much comes standard with all the available features for the E-Class lineup, including a premium 14-speaker Harman Kardon audio system putting out 610 watts of musical power, not to mention Dolby Digital DTS certified 5.1 channel surround sound. Also available is a 15-speaker premium Bang & Olufsen Bayo sound audio system for those true audiophiles who want that extra punch. Now all of that multimedia is fed through the newest generation Mercedes Command System, a 7-inch mobile media navigation telemetrics interface with standard satellite radio, hands-free Bluetooth connectivity, and more. All controlled via the Command Rotary Controller, accented with an aluminum knob located right in the center console. Now I'll talk about how the Command System works a little bit more in depth in just a second, but in general, it's actually a hard drive based navigation system with about 80 gigabytes of total storage. Now, while most of that is primarily taken up by the navigation functions as well as some other system features that require memory storage, you actually have about 10 gigabytes or so that you can use for an integrated um, iPod, so to speak. So you can load up all of your MP3 files, store them on the music register, and play them directly from the screen. The Harman Kardon audio system sounds absolutely fantastic. It's nice and crisp and clean, just like you'd expect from Harman Kardon. I'm a pretty big fan of the system myself, and while I haven't listened to the Bang & Olufsen system available for the E-Class, it is a $5,000 option or so, so you might want to weigh the cost-benefit ratio and actually listen to both systems yourself before purchasing. Alcantara Line Day Pillars grip handles up top, and your visors are also wrapped in Alcantara. Little card holder, illuminated vanity mirrors, and a standard auto-dimming rear view mirror with three position garage home link located down below. In the top stack, you have your reading lamps as well as interior illumination, automatic sunroof and sunshade controls, as well as Mercedes-Benz Embrace emergency roadside assistance. To activate the sunroof, just tip the button back. A wind deflector automatically pops up as it slides across the rear glass. And once it's closed, you can pull the button back again, and that automatically brings out your sunshades. Now as far as how to use the command system, like I said, it's all controlled via the aluminum rotary dial in the center console. The only other two buttons are clear if you need to delete a selection that you typed in, or back. All you have to do is simply click up, down, left, and right, and push in to make an appropriate selection. Of course, scrolling back and forth between the different options. Now one of the first things you notice about how it's organized is the system features a three-tier menu, up here, the middle portion, and down below. So if you click the wheel all the way up, it'll highlight the top options. Down one brings up the middle, where in navigation you can make a full screen. Press it down once again to bring the menus back, and then down one more time to highlight the bottom options. If we go to the audio screen first, this is what you'll see when you just have a simple um, MP3 or auxiliary in place. If you go to the very top, you can see your different media and radio options, AM, FM, satellite radio, CD player, SD card input, your hard drive, USB, other MP3 device, hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio, the rear audio, as well as auxiliary like I said what we're in right now. Hitting back will cancel out of that menu. Down below, when you're in your different media options, you'll have different functions down below here, but common is your sound adjustments. Different equalizers, activating your surround sound, now we're going to check out the satellite radio screen. So here we have your main radio screen. This is pretty similar between satellite radio as well as your standard radio tuner. The same three-tier menu. And in the middle, you have an old-school radio tuner that you can use to select between the different stations. Clicking all the way to the bottom, manually enter stations, bring it up to the channel lists, entering your preset stations, go between song information as well as the radio tuner, search by category, 
as well as going between the different radio modes themselves, including your weather band. Chance of precipitation, 30%. Tuesday your sound adjustment, like I showed you in the bottom. Lows in the mid-40s. Highs in the mid-60s. Heading back up and over to navigation, brings up your map. If you highlight navigation again, it brings up all of your route settings and other customizable options. Down below in guide, points of interest, storing favorite locations, real-time traffic updates, and your destination input. It's all rather quick and simple. There's not a lot of lag between the different screens. Your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, it automatically asks you to pair it and then you can voice dial, store contacts, messages, etc. The system is also video compatible so you can load up DVDs and play them, of course, when it's safe. And system shows an analog clock that you can bring full screen for a clean, simple look as well as all the different vehicle settings. Activating your camera, so you don't always have to be in reverse. And off to the far right in the little world icon, you can load up custom apps, bring up the internet. Your owner's manual is actually loaded up on the system. And you have serious real-time weather updates with extended forecasts, as well as map. Definitely pretty cool. But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the Mercedes command system in the E63 AMG. The beautiful dash finished with the high gloss wood veneer and single cut aluminum pieces as it trails across the bottom and accents the air vents where you have an elegant analog clock located front and center. As you continue down the center console, you have a dialing pad over here that you can use for your telephone or to store your different preset stations. Your CD changer in the middle, as well as the different shortcut keys for the command system for radio, navigation, etc. System settings, off and on hook button for the telephone, and seek, rewind, fast forward, track selection, depending on which mode that you're in. Down below here, in the new aluminum buttons for 2014, you have three stage heated and ventilated seats, like I touched on earlier. If the rear headrests are extended upward, you can press this button and it'll automatically lower them for better visibility. The Eco Mode, tied in with the vehicle's standard auto start stop feature, allows the vehicle, when activated, to come to a complete stop and actually power off when you're at a stoplight or a stop sign. As soon as you let your foot off the brake, the vehicle automatically reignites so you can take off and be on your way and saves a little bit of fuel. Also turning on and off your parking sensors. Continuing on down below at the bottom, you have a standard dual zone electronic automatic climate control system with unique toggle switches down below for your temperature, fan speed, different zones, front and rear defrost with heated side view mirrors, one touch automatic, as well as recycling through an air filtration system. Nicely blended in with the center console with high gloss black piano veneer. Scoot this up here and you have a lighter, ashtray and or power outlet. The aluminum also carries into the center console, where you have leather padding, as well as color accent stitching, two cup holders that are also adjustable, your AMG driving mode, traction control, adaptive dampers, and everything like I touched on earlier, and there's a button on either side here to open up the split center console. It's a good amount of storage, has some media inputs, USB, auxiliary, as well as a power outlet. As far as the steering wheel, your driver info system controls are located to the left, whereas your hands-free telephone, voice commands, and radio controls are located on the right. Help. This device cannot be voice operated. The following devices are voice controllable. Navigation, address book, telephone, radio, audio CD, audio DVD, or MP3. Cancel. It's a pretty simple system to use overall. It kind of walks you through and coaches you, but you can't use your MP3 or auxiliary device just because it isn't hardwired to the system like you would um, integrating your iPod. Your driver info system is located in the little digital display in the middle of the speedometer cluster. It's accented by satin silver rings. Using the directional arrows, you can go back and forth between the different menus. Trip computer, navigation, audio, telephone, 
the different safety features for the vehicle. Just about every one imaginable. Service reminders and customizable options. Not to mention a specific AMG screen, shows vehicle statistics, digital speed readout, what gear you're in, and you can also activate the vehicle's launch control and check lap times. And it's a nice simple gauge cluster overall, with your tachometer off to the far right, and your vehicle fuel and temperature to the far left. Everything else is located within the driver info system. Not to mention your automatic rain sensing windshield wipers and controls for the rear wiper. Cruise control and adaptive cruise are located down below in that little stock. All in all, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Pretty straightforward interior and elegantly crafted. We're gonna shut her down. And check out the back seat. Now, I'll talk about this a bit more in just a second, but what's cool about a wagon is that you have the comfort and luxury amenities like you would find in a car, but the added practicality of rear passenger space and the extra storage out back. AMG also did a really good job tailoring the back seat to mimic the same sporty aspect that you would find in the front. The door panels feature the same excellent build quality with stitched leather on top, as well as the wood veneer, storage down below, and the cross stitch pattern coming across the middle portion. Three stage heated seats for the back passengers, aluminum door handles, as well as manual sunshades for extra privacy and sun protection. The seats themselves are also perforated just like the front, with the silver color accent stitching and silver seat belts. And if you need a bit more storage space, all you have to do is just press this little release and the seats automatically fold forward themselves. I'll talk about how that affects cargo room during the trunk portion in just a second. Now one of the nice things about wagons to give it a practicality edge over a typical sedan is how much back seat room there is, not to mention the cargo space out back, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Getting in and out and the overall interior feel is very similar to what you would find in an E-Class sedan, but because the estate has more of a formal roof line and squared off opening, it's going to be a little bit easier to get in and out, especially for taller individuals. You also have more headspace in the back, so it definitely makes it more comfortable for a longer journey. Plus, you just gotta love those solid closing panels. One of the first things you'll notice when you climb into the back of the wagon, of course, is the increased headroom. Now, I'm about 5'11", and with a comfortable seating position for myself up front, I probably have about, let's say, four and a half inches or so, roughly. And leg space, three and a half, four inches, depending on the height of the um, person in front of you. But what's also nice, they have cutouts in the back of the seat here to give your knees a little bit more wiggle room. And there's just a little bit of hardware under the seats, so you can stretch out just a little bit, but basically what you see is what you get right here. There are some storage pockets on the back of the seats. These vents right here actually work to pull the air in from the back to provide the cooling function for the front seats. This particular one also features the option of rear seat entertainment system. Two LCD screens with audio-visual inputs and a DVD player mounted at the bottom here. I'll show some of these other things um, a little bit closer during the first-person clips in a second. Down below, you do have your air registers, a power outlet, as well as a little ashtray or, and or a little storage pocket. Not to mention a leather padded armrest, also with a little bit of storage, and fold out adjustable cup holders. But what's also cool for backseat passengers is that you still have that signature AMG flavor that you would find in the front, like the silver seat belts, the silver color, the color accent stitching, and the perforated sport leather seats. Now, while this is a bench seat, it does offer some nice definition. Not a ton of lateral support, but it's there. Also, lower back support is quite nice. Overall, the seats themselves are firm yet supportive with enough padding in all the right places. You also have manual sunshades that you can roll up and clip up top. Coat hooks, of course, grip handles, and coat hooks on the B-pillar. So, your practicality is pretty much covered in this vehicle. The seat belts are also adjustable, as are the headrests. 
Now, like I said, your air registers are located down below with a power outlet hidden inside the little storage compartment. Your DVD drive and audiovisual inputs are located in the middle of the seat here. And there's some more on either side of the screen. Like I said, plenty of coat hooks, as well as grab handles. Beautifully open with the large windows and panoramic roof, and the Alcantara headliner also carries on all the way into the rear compartment. You also have side curtain airbags for the rear passengers, of course. So let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? The E63 wagon features a standard power lift gate. In addition to that, it also has a new safety feature that if the gate comes into contact with something as it closes, it automatically rises back up without damaging the door. As far as cargo space itself, thanks to its wide opening, the wagon can fit much taller items than the sedan ever could. When you fold down the rear seats, if the front seats are actually too far back, it will automatically slide the front seats forward to allow the middle row seat to clear as it folds. With the seats up, it's an impressive 20.5 cubic feet of cargo space. Fold the seats down and remove the cargo cover, and it expands more than double to 57.4 cubic feet. Of course, you do have some side storage pockets on either end, as well as plenty of cargo anchors and a power outlet. While the standard E-Class wagon is available with a rear-facing third-row seat like I mentioned earlier, the E63 AMG is not, being that this is more of a performance-oriented wagon versus a people hauler. You also have the same power adjustments as well as three-person memory on the passenger seat that you find on the drivers. The only thing it doesn't have is that little inner control panel there for the thigh adjustment, massage, as well as side ball strain adjustment. You do have a locking glove box as standard, also padded, and two tier with a good amount of storage. The E63 AMG wagon is an awesome example of practicality meeting creativity. When raw power blends with handling refinement in a comfortable wagon that's able to run with the supercar category. Now with the added convenience of all weather driving thanks to the standard 4MATIC system, it's able to be enjoyed all year long in a wide variety of climates. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2014 Mercedes-Benz E63 AMG S Wagon. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.